good starts okay there it goes so if you look on the syllabus oh, okay. there's a link to YouTube videos okay oh that's right and there I, I organize them like playlists right so the IPC 110 playlist okay that being said as I said I I don't like them much but other people seem to so. Okay, are we almost ready? How many? Everybody kind of set up. Got Visual Studio sort of started. So what I want to do is I'm going to lead you through the first assignment, all three parts of it, and I will talk through it a lot because I'm going to try to explain all the different things that we're doing. This will be a way to kind of catch up with the week we lost. And it gives you the first thing. I'll even show you how to post it. <laughs> so... Um, we're ready? Go? Yes? No? Okay. First thing I'm going to do, if it lets me, what is it spinning for? Why am I spinning? Is it Visual Studio that's causing it to spin? Okay, well, I'll give it just a second. What we're going to do and what we'll mostly do in here is do file new project. I wonder if it'll let me. It may be spinning for something else, for like uh, Google or something, I don't know. But I'm going, we're going to do a new project. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and do that. It'll open up a dialog box here. And generally what we want Okay, so there are a couple of things. Make sure it's C-sharp. Some of you will start off with uh, Visual Basic at the top, depending on the decisions you made when it asks you what your defaults are going to be. Uh, but we want uh, C-sharp, and we're going to mostly do console applications, which are the most boring kinds of applications. But they, they're pure. They don't have a bunch of other garbage in there that confuses. A uh, couple of things that I'm going to talk about real quick. This is the work. This is the version of uh, .NET that we're using. If you were working on a um, for a business or you, you have an older version at home, you can step back, right? You can step back to other earlier frameworks. So if you have an earlier version of Visual Studio, you can save it to like .NET 4. 4 is fairly old. If you want to do that, uh, you can, and, and if, you, if it's even older, if you do more frameworks, it'll go back even farther. Then it'll be compatible. If not, it'll still be pretty compatible, but you, you might have to cut and paste it rather than load it into a project, and I'll show you how to do that at some point. But we'll stick with the default here. Um, notice, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, but if you have Visual Studio of the Enterprise, one of the reasons why you might want to get it is that it has a lot of different projects. And I'm not sure how Microsoft managed to uh, set this up, but they have not only the Windows projects, web projects where you can create websites. It actually is a pretty good HTML editor, and uh, it'll do CSS and it'll do JavaScript, you know, so it has IntelliSense for all those things. Uh, Windows Forms, WPF, which we will do a WPF. It's a Windows Presentation Foundation. People don't actually use Windows Forms much anymore. They use Windows Presentation Foundation, which gives you, lets you do things like um, gradients and uh, a lot more subtle uh, visual effects. Not that we're going to spend a lot of time on the visual effects, but it, <laughs> it does allow you. It even allows you to have forms that are not square if you want. Uh, ASP.NET is uh, their web uh, set. I do a class, IPC 172 is mostly ASP.NET and creating websites with C Sharp and things like that. The other thing you might notice beyond all the C Sharp projects is that there are Android projects. Uh, there's projects for the Apple Watch. There's projects for cloud, which in this case would be mostly Azure, although you can make it work with uh, Amazon's S2, Amazon Web Services. Uh, there's um, iPad, iPhone, you know. There's TVOS. I mean, they've got like everything <coughs> in here that you could 
dream of as a project. I have never tried to do the Android or the iPad or iPhone apps in here. When I do Android, I usually use the Google Suite for that. But And I think what happens is you can write your iPad app in C Sharp, and it will map it to the, uh, the Objective-C libraries that the uh, iPad requires. There's other languages. There's Visual Basic, Visual F Sharp, which is a functional language. <laughs> I don't want to explain that very much right now, but it um, is a really good language for engineering and science apps. Um, it's very good for, it's functional in the sense that it's when you write your math functions, they look like math functions. Right, so you can you can actually write if you're writing calculus and stuff. This is not a bad language to do it in. We're not going to do that. <laughs> but that's part of what it's there. There's C plus plus. It's still used a lot on the lower. There's SQL Server projects. There's JavaScript projects. Python. It's actually not a bad Python editor. And you don't have. There's two types of Python. And this is just background. It's not part of our. Python, uh, Iron Python means that it compiles to a .NET uh, compiler, but you can do straight Python too. You don't have to do Iron Python. You can just do straight Python in here. I prefer it to the IDEs that come with Python. But so anyway, if you the one advantage of getting this is that you have like everything. You know, it's a development platform for everything. One of the things that Microsoft is doing, for good or ill is they're trying to become less Windows centric. You know, like you can get Microsoft Office for your Android phone or your, your iPad. And they're actually pretty good apps. They're, they're really good apps, actually. The only thing that even begins to compete with them are the Google apps, I think. <laughs> so, but we're going to do the console. A couple of other things is that down here is where you name it, right? It says name. So I'm going to just name this as assignment assignment one one I guess because I think I would make a separate um, one of these for each. Actually, let's do an underscore one. Um, I would do a separate console app for each part of it. It'll make your life easier than trying to run it through different times. Yeah, that computer doesn't work too well. This one probably does if you want to. OK. <laughs> um, questions on any? The other thing is I would name it here. I'll get the others working. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell David about the ones that aren't working and we'll get them working. Naming it down here, let me um, put a, scroll up a little so you can see it better, is your best bet. One of the things that you'll find in Visual Studio is that renaming things is fraught with problems. Particularly when you get into more complicated programs, there's often multiple files involved. And when you rename something inside the Visual Studio, it can have cascading effects that are problems, cause problems. This is the place to name your assignment that is safest. Does that make sense? All right, so all of this is just to get started. Generally, what we will do, C Sharp console application, give it some sort of name and do OK. OK, so it'll take it a moment, and it'll give you a template. There's lots of different assignment templates. And you could write all this in Notepad. You don't need um, Visual Studio for this, but it's a whole lot nicer in Visual Studio. Do you guys have line numbers? Yeah. You do? OK. That's usually not the default. I'm not sure David must have added that in the thing. Uh, if you ever don't have line numbers and you want them, they're under tools, options, and you want to look for the text, all languages, and then choose line numbers. You can change the font there, too. I don't think I'll go there right now. But this is the basic uh, 
template here. There's a few things I want to explain. We talked about them a little bit. Remember what the using statements are? They're, they're libraries or pre-written code for you. Notice how these are gray. That's because none of them are being used right now. They're, they're just there. And, and C Sharp is smart enough that if you don't actually use it, it won't include it into the compiled program. Compiling, you know, it brings it all together. If you have a library you use, it'll, it'll bring those, uh, that code into your program too. Uh, so this is our namespace. Notice the namespace name is whatever you name the assignment. You can change this here if you want. I mean, but it won't actually change the file name. There's another piece of this. Well, over, over to this side, there's Solution Explorer. And this has all of your uh, files in it. Um, for the most part, you can, uh, this, this is your actually your only file. Your text file is the program.cs. This is a, an important window just for keeping track of what's going on. This is the question. Solution Explorer. When you, in the location, what did you put where you said it's, it's Oh, you know what? So I just left set. That's a good point. I mentioned the file path. Where the default is my documents. There's a in my documents called Visual Studio. And the project will go into a project under Visual Studio. My documents, Visual Studio projects, whatever your name, the name of your project is. That'll be the path by default. I would generally just let it go there, and then, as I'll show you when we're done, what I would do is, if you want to take it home, I would move the whole folder. I would just take the whole folder of uh, the project. Quick question: Eyes aren't that good. Is there a way to like zoom or take it? Home? Yes, I can make the font bigger. Oh, just, 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 oh sorry. Got it. Thank you. Got it. Oh, you mean on yours? But I'll, I'll show you anyway. If you go to Tools uh, and you go to Options, almost everything in the here can be changed right under Tools Options. So um, basically for the fonts, there's a thing for fonts and colors. And uh, yeah, so you can change the size. I'm I'm only going to bring it up to like 12. If I use the zoom, if I stop using the zoom, I'll uh, make it a lot bigger. Much better. And you can change the colors of everything. If you go down to, and you can change it. It's consolas by default. You can do courier. Sometimes I change it to. Um, down in the V's, uh, Verdana. And the only reason I sometimes change it to Verdana is that the curly braces are really distinct from the parentheses. You know, just the, it's really clear. It's not uh, monospaced, and usually code fonts are monospaced. But yeah, I'm not going to change it right now. We'll see how that goes. Under the text editor, uh, if you do um, like all languages, this is where you can add line numbers. You can add word wrap if you want. There's other things you can do in here. I mean, literally everything can be uh, changed. Okay. So, a couple of other things. Uh, if you lose a window, so say I lost Solution Explorer. You don't need Team Explorer. Don't really need the class view, but whatever. Um, if you lose it, you can go to View, and I can get the Solution Explorer, and it will come back. Every window is available through View. So if you lose it, like uh, later we'll have toolbox stuff. If you lose the toolbox, you can always get it back here. You know there. Pretty much anything's available through the view. And tools options is a way to customize pretty much anything. OK. As I said, I'm going to talk a lot through these while we do these assignments, just because we didn't get a chance to really show it and feel it beforehand. 
Uh, I won't do this every time. I won't explain every element every time. Do you remember what the class? So we did the namespace. Namespaces are basically for grouping things that belong together. By default, your namespace is whatever you name your project. Again, it, it doesn't actually affect anything if you change that. Program is the class that they give you by default as your first class. It doesn't have to be called program. You could change the name and it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, I usually leave the first one with the main as program. It just makes sense to sort of leave it as that. Later, right now we're going to write most of our code in here. Later we'll get to the point where basically the only thing in the program class will be the main and the main will do nothing except call the other stuff, right? Because ultimately, that's what you want the main to do. This little method inside here is basically just uh, the starting point. And ideally, that's all you want to do in there is the code you need to start your program. But at the beginning, we'll use it to write all of our code. I'm going to do a couple of other little things real quick before we start doing the actual assignment. I'm going to do a comment where I say this uh, program will, what is our first thing for the assignment? It's just to uh, get a name and address set up, right? So name and email. And we'll do it as a, we'll take in a user's name and email. And display it. And I think we were going to display it as like last name. Actually, let me break the line. You don't have to break the lines, but I'm last name, comma, first name. Did we have a, like a dash and an email? I forget exactly how it is. Yes, yes. So, yes. Uh, and dash. Yeah. I'm going to just close that. So that's a multi-line comment. Right? And it's a really good idea to put a header on these. The other thing that's really good in a header, it would be like your name. And um, probably the date. What is today for? That's a really, I mean, when you, if you work for a company, you will probably have to add headers to classes that you write and programs that you write. And they'll probably want a whole lot more in it than this. But this is sort of like a minimal, it gives a quick description of the program and uh, your name and date. Typically, companies want you to sign them so that they can yell at you. Maybe. <laughs> what do you mean doing that? So, uh, but it's fairly typical. If you look at professional code, sometimes this header is literally pages long because it'll describe everything that's done in the class. It's basically documentation. Does that make sense? And it's a good idea to comment. Now, there's another kind of comment that you can do which is just a two lines, two dashes like that. This is only one line. This, this allows you to do multiple lines, and then you just end it. This one is only a single line. So if you break it, you have to do another double dash. And I'm just going to say uh, starting point of the program. Program. OK. It's good to comment. Especially when you uh, first start. I mean, it's always good to comment, and a professional coder should comment. They don't always, but they should. A <laughs> couple of other things that I'm going to show you that are useful to comment. As I've said, one of the things that's going to drive you insane initially are the curly braces. And if you get an A curly, one curly brace out of place, and the whole program goes askew. It starts to, it'll get, you'll have bunches of errors at the bottom. One of the things that can help is just to do like end of, comment the ending braces. So this is the end of main. So this is the end of the method. 
right? This is the end of class uh, program. And then this is the end of the namespace. If I were to take out one of these braces, I'm just going to do that. I should have, notice how it gives me red lines. So it says it, it doesn't know what this is anymore because that curly brace is gone. And uh, it basically says that you have to declare this as a body because it's not marked abstract, external or partial. And the trouble with some of these error messages is, does that mean anything to you? <laughs> <laughs> it does mean something, but not really. The thing is you can have a method that doesn't have a body if you're writing an abstract class, but we're not. And then notice it added an extra one, which gives you a little red curly brace here because we have an extra. But the nice thing about it is it will put little red squigglies where the mistakes are. Does that make sense? It, it helps. Question. Yeah. Is there any preference for the type of comments you're using? Like you're using two different commenting? So, uh, not really. I mean, you, if you wanted to, you can. This was a series of these lines, right? Because okay. every line would have to. Okay, and then you don't have to use that kind. Right? This kind you don't have to close because okay. they can't do a line. Okay. Okay. If I break the line here. You have to start. You have to. So if I break the line here, what you do is I get. Yeah, it gets curly braces and stuff. So it's not. These are one-line comments. There's multi. There's a third type of comment. I don't know that I want to. We won't use it much. Three lines. And then comment. Uh, XML comments are useful when you're doing some stuff because you can actually output them as a document. Anybody, probably nobody's ever done something like that with Java docs. <laughs> Docs. So if you have it, this is going to be easy. <laughs> Java and C Sharp are really close. And, and that, that's one C Sharp in here is because you could do Android or you do, I mean, uh, right, so you're close to the next job. Okay. We've got everything up, but we still haven't. We've done it. <laughs> so to ten name and um, their name, and we need to take last name, name and email. So let me show you a couple of uh, declarables. You can do this in multiple ways, and I may show you, I'll show you. And I'll show you ones. The way you declare a variable is you give the dead type, you give the variable name is basically to help you remember what it is. Store it in memory. You don't have to worry about where it is because when you declare it, it will retrieve the value that you're going to. Uh, it'll be close to name. Anybody know why to Right. It's been used yet. It's not an error, but it hasn't been used. If you put your cursor over, notice a little first declared but never used. And that's just, it, we, we just haven't used it yet. So you'll get green underlines. Underlines are just informational. They're not, does that make sense? So these are things about the text file we give you these. The other thing, notice that we declare the type thing. You guys know this? Right, it'll 
any your keys that uh, character doesn't like a, you can enter numbers as numbers of them as a characters. Technically, it doesn't matter. Use more than half strings are characters. Um, this is a naming engine. This is uh, very common where the uh, first letter of the variable name is lowercase. Camel cases, which means that if it's more than one word, if the word starts with a capital, you have them together. You are allowed to have space in variables. There's certain characters you can't have, like a percent sign or a dollar sign. Um, and at least start language, this language is make you put a dollar sign in front of them. <laughs> uh, but basically, cases, if you don't like the character, you can't underscore between them. If you prefer that, this is the actual naming convention for variables. Questions on that? The semicolon, too. This is our first actual statement for declaring something. Statements can declare something when declaring a variable of a string type and we put a semicolon. It takes a while to get the hang of where semicolons go versus where they don't go. So I'm going to do, what do you think, last name? And then I'm also going to do email. They're all strings. They're all just characters. They all have green underlines. So one way you can do this is you can declare them at the top. And as I said, I'll show you. You can also declare them in process if you want. Some people like to declare them at the top because it's real clear what your variables are and where they are, if that makes sense. Um, and that's perfectly fine to do that. Any questions on those so far? You're always welcome any time to interrupt me, and if I do fast, call me. Yeah. Uh, so probably not terribly relevant at the moment, but um, the naming convention on Hungarian notation, is that relevant to C sharp? I know that's our first problem. So is this Hungarian or uh, isn't Hungarian? Is it Hungarian? Where you do the uh, like? Uh, the one you, you like use. Str. Um, like the naming convention ends up being yeah, like it'd be Str, Fir, Nam, or something. Yeah. So actually, some discourages using that. Okay. Do they? <laughs> yes. Okay, because I heard that the guy that it, because somebody I know who works at Microsoft learned it from the guy who originated. So they the used name. to do it. So one of the things you could do is like um, str first name, which tells you that the variable is a string type. The thing with that is that if you say it's not going to happen so much with a string, but say you do it with an uh, integer type, what if you change it to double? So. Basically, what happens is you have to go and change uh, things all the way through. You have to change all the variables as of int is in the variable. So rather than what they suggest is giving the meaning names, and notice whenever you put a cursor over it, it'll tell you that it's a string or whatever data type it is. So they have to discourage that now. But that's an old programming paradigm, though, that was prior to this. Uh, which is something I heard about from somebody. Yeah, no, fine. Um, and actually, I still use that once in a while. Not so much in these, but when I'm doing um, like Windows or web forms, I will do BTN uh, to tell me that it's a button that I'm dealing with, or TXT to tell me it's a text box. So they're objects that are of a particular type. It's unlikely that they're going to change. And I really want to know the difference between a text box and a label and a button. And so I do use that kind of notation for those. Whether, and, and typically for naming conventions, when you get a job, they give you a style sheet, which tells you which naming conventions they want you to use. All right. So this. We're going to use an object that is pre-built, which is comp. Notice uh, this is teal and this is teal. Console is a class. 
this in that. One of the things you can tell, too, I think it'll show up at the, well, I have to finish this. Let's do console right line. And we'll just say enter, let's just say enter your first name. And I'll do a semicolon because this is a statement, it's a command. It's inside the thing here. Uh, and it's basically a console object that they wrote for you that talks to the black box, the DOS thing we'll be using. Line is a method of the console, and what it'll do is it'll write onto the screen. All right, very top of this, you'll notice that system is now dark. We're actually using something that's in the system. I'll just get a better view. What? I said I'll just get a better view. Oh, no, that's in the meantime. <coughs> Does that make sense? So get their first name. And so first name is a variable, right? So we use it again. We're going to get it. The equal sign here doesn't mean equality. It means a sign. We're assigning a value to it. And where are we going to get that value? We're going to get it also from the console. Only this time, instead of writing a line, we are going to read a line. So whatever you type onto the console will get assigned to first name. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, where you wrote enter your first name, I see how the F doesn't capitalize. Is that just? Oh, uh, that's because I'm a really consistent typist. <laughs> is that just because that's how first name is? No. And actually, it's actually a good point. The, what's in the quotes is a literal. It, it has no effect on the. It'll show up on the screen, but it has no effect on how the program runs. So case it's not case sensitive inside the quotes, although all the rest is. So this has to have this the lowercase f and the uppercase n. Inside of here, it doesn't matter at all. And I'm a terrible typist. <laughs> Consistency would be useful. Um, again, the naming convention sort of force you to be. If you've ever done, anybody done JavaScript or things like that? A little bit of JavaScript? Yeah. JavaScript is, doesn't require you to declare your variables like this. So you can just do var. Right? It's not type, uh, it's not a strongly typed language, but C sharp is. Everything has to have a type. So these are listed as string. Notice that the green line has gone away because we've used it now. You could run this if you wanted at this point, uh, although it would just flash by. Uh, let's just sort of finish getting the um, things here. So the other lines are going to be exactly If you want to, you could just copy and paste and change this to uh, last name and change this also to last name. The danger with copying and pasting is that you don't you forget to change something. But on the other hand, most programmers don't like to type more code than they have to. And so basically I just copied and pasted this and then this is first name, now it's last name, and I changed that to last name. And you could do the same again with email. And I'm going to just say enter your email, and I notice that your is capitalized for no reason. And it doesn't matter. Right? And then I'm going to change this to email. Does that make sense? And then we'll run this in a minute and we'll walk through it again a little bit. I'm assuming if nobody's complaining, it makes sense. Am I going too fast? And again, copying and pasting is fine as long as you remember that you have to change 
things, right? Uh, if, because sometimes uh, one of the errors that often occurs is you'll copy and paste something and forget that you, uh, to change it. If I had left this as first name, it would just replace whatever I wrote as first name up here. First name down the last one replaces the one above it. OK, so let's display these. And there's a couple of ways to do this. I'll show you the more efficient one first. So we've done uh, right lines. We're going to do another right line. Um, console dot right line. And notice the IntelliSense here. This can help a lot if you're not a good typist. So this pops down gives you right or right line. The difference between those is that right doesn't have a line break at the end of it, and right line does. You know what I mean? So if you use right line, the next statement will be on the line below it. If you don't use right line, it'll be right beside it, which sometimes you want. You can uh, click on that with the mouse or, oh, yeah. And it will kind of correct your typing as you go on. It's actually very nice. Um, it always is followed by parentheses. And if I wanted to write an empty line, I could just do a semicolon here, and that would be fine for an empty line. I am going to do something that will be a little bit weird. And I'll show you other ways you could do it. I'm going to do a parentheses with this, or semi. <clears throat> so that's actually curly braces with a zero. I'm going to do comma and a space and curly braces with a one. And then I'm going to do a dash. I don't know if I can get an actual M dash in there. Um, and I'm going to do um, curly braces and a two. And what these, I didn't want a line break. Although it doesn't actually matter, but I don't want a line break there. Um, All right, so, and actually I want quotes around those, like this. There's curly braces around all the numbers, right? Yeah, there's curly braces around the numbers. And what those that does, anybody have an idea what that does? What? It tells you what you're Yeah, basically they're just, they're placeholders, right? There's a couple of ways you can do this. One of the ways is we could concatenate it and I'll show you how to do that. But a nice thing that C-sharp has, and this is a C-sharp only thing, so I will show you the concatenation, is that they have placeholders. So what you have to do is tell it what you're going to put into the placeholders. So I'm going to do last name, comma, uh, first name, comma, uh, email. And those are the... Those are the variables, right? So last name goes to zero, first name goes to one, email goes to two. Now, the goal is and the dashes and the comma here are literal, so it'll just be printed in there. Does that make sense? There's no magic. It doesn't know what goes where. It's first to first, second to second, last to last. We need to get those like slashes in between one and two. You, that's just a dash. That's just going to be a literal dash. All right. Nice. I'm going to do one other thing, and we'll always have to do this because if you run this in Visual Studio, it will execute all of this. It'll ask us to enter the first name. It'll ask us to enter the last name. It'll ask us to enter this. But once you've entered the email, it will flash by so fast you can't see the results. <laughs> so to slow it down, I'm going to just do console read key. All right, and if you want, you can do, this is actually not a bad thing to do, console right line, and I'll put it up if you can't see it in just a sec. Um, I'm just going to inside this right line say press any key to exit.
So what read key does, it's a method of console, and it takes a key stroke. If it's empty like this, if you take, it'll take any keystroke. And once it does the keystroke, the program will end. Right. I'm going to run this in a second. Do you guys need a minute? Yes. Does this make sense? I mean, it's really simple. I just want you to get the feel for the environment. We're doing input. You know, the, the, we're doing output with the console write line. We're giving, putting out a message. The console read line is basically taking an input. Um, most languages will do this. I actually, Java is a little bit more complicated than this in some extent, but just because it has a different object for it taking input. Um, again, same thing again. Output, input, output, input. This is just output. The weird thing here is the placeholders. Are you ready? Yeah. Placeholders is more for spacing. Well, it lets you space it, you know, and it lets you. Um, it it's actually makes it really easy to format it. Let me show you what it does, and then I'll show you the other way to do it. All right. So to run this. If you go up here, there's a start button, and you just click that. And it builds it, and then notice it says, enter your first name. As I said, console programs are dull. You know, later, we'll do a Windows program, and we'll do a web program, too, towards the end of the quarter. But, so I'll just do uh, Steve. Congress, so enter the last name. My email, I'll just do spconger at gmail.com. It actually doesn't care what you're entering as long as it's a string. So, And when I do that, notice it outputs it as conger, comma, Steve, spconger, and with the double dashes as a literal. And then it says press any key to exit, and if I press a key, it goes away. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. 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 So yeah, the so all yes, all the 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 matter. Matter. that's your that's yeah. your that's your uh, uh, oh, you did dashes as I think. Does it just go here? Oh, go here. Yeah, that should be okay. Oh, not right. Your dashes should work. Yeah, it should work. Yeah, it should work. Yeah, it should work. One, two, three, four. So I think you still have an extra one. Zero. Last one, first name. So this one is extra. Hold on, try that. Stop it in front of you. Little red box. If you if you have an error and you want to rerun it, there's a little red box at the top. If you click on that, it'll right. stop it. How many there's others have? Uh, anyone else have any problems? Yeah, whatever you're whatever you're Like any stray characters on the screen, it might be, it'll mark those as errors too. Anything else? Everybody got it okay? Questions about it? So we just kind of created a form, right? Well, basically, we created it, it's kind of a form, it's a console based form. Yeah, it's yeah. not real exciting, but so yeah, well, we basically did take input. You know, output to the, for a prompt, input to get the value, output, input, output, input, and then we took what we had done and just did a minor rearrangement of it, basically. I wanted to show you, I'll do exactly the same output, but I'll do it a little bit differently. So I'm going to do uh, console right line. And... If you didn't use the placeholders, then what you'd have to do is like uh, last name with a capital N plus, because I'm going to put the comma in there, uh, plus 
uh, uh, first name. Plus dash dash plus email. Okay. This will have exactly the same look on the screen as the other one. A little bit more complicated in some ways, but in a lot, in most other languages, this would be your only choice. It's called concatenation. Have you ever done that before? You're basically the plus sign there is to say. You jam this together, basically, you run it together. You have to be really careful to add your own spaces, because uh, it, it'll, it'll, if the space is an actual character. If it isn't there, it'll not put it there. Uh, these are the variable names. To some people, this makes more sense than the space placeholder. So it's, it, as I said, they both, when I run this now, you'll see that the two lines will look exactly the same. You know, there's absolutely no difference between the two lines. But they're just two different ways of doing the same. Questions on that? As I said, only, uh, as far as I know, only C Sharp has those placeholders. <laughs> they're nice, but it's good to know the other way because in other languages, you have to do the concatenation. We okay with the first one? Once you have run this successfully, and it does have to run successfully, but once it's run successfully, it is saved. Right? It is actually saved. And um, if you want to be sure, what you want to do is save all, right? And save all, and particularly if it didn't run successfully, you do want to do save all. What will get you into trouble is that save as will save it as a different thing. It's not part of the program anymore. It'll be a separate file, no longer part of the program files. So save as is kind of a way of exporting a file. It'll drive you crazy because you save as, but the changes won't be reflected in your program. All right, so you want to save all, just save it all. And again, if it runs, it will be saved. Let me go also real quickly to the file folder so I can show you where this is, and then we'll start another one. Um, so if we go to documents, there's Visual Studio 2015 and there's projects. And notice that there's an assignment 1.1. One, one. And if I open that, I have to open a couple of them. This, these are the, you have three folders in here and you have a program CS. The program CS is, I'm going to open it with Notepad. That's the code you just wrote, right? And that's the part I need to see is the, the program.cs. And again, if this is a Notepad, you could just upload this or paste it into the text box. Or you could put it uh, the code into um, Google Docs and link the Google Doc. You know when you're turning it in, there's lots of ways to turn it in. Or you know it's actually once you're done with all three, if you want to upload all three CS files, they're just text files. And uh, Canvas is smart enough to figure that out, which surprises me because some things it's not very smart about. So we can just send it back to the program. What? You can just send you the, uh, right, I don't need the whole program. I don't mess. Maybe when we get to the point where your program has five or six files, then uh, then it might make sense to like zip it or something. But at this point, all I need is the CS file. Notice it has the program.cs. So let's go back to the folder. So I don't need, like this is the project file. That, that's utterly useless to me. What the project? How are you to that screen? Yeah. Oh, so the way I did this, I'll do it again. 
the where the program is saved by default is documents right so it's under my documents or just documents visual studio 2015 projects mine was named assignment 1.1 and then there's a folder inside of that for some reason i don't have did you direct it somewhere else uh possibly actually open your under assignment one the top one Oh, that was it. Oh, yeah. so I have to. Okay. And program CS is the way the code is. Okay. For what it's worth, if you go into binary and debug, there's an assignment 1.1 exec. And if I hit that, uh, that's the config. There should be an exec. Um, let me look at the folder again. Oh, it's that's the XML configuration. This is the actual exe. One of the things I hate about Windows so this is the actual exec. If I run that, it'll run. Right? And if you ever are really proud of something you write and want to distribute it to your friends, the only file you actually need is the executable. <laughs> so uh, there is a, there is a, in the binary folder, there's an executable that will have everything combined in it and you can execute it. Don't give it to me though, because I can't get, you can't get to the code through the executable. Right, for me, for the assignment, all I need is the, um, the, the C sharp file. So how do we submit that? So as I said, this you can open it up into Notepad, or you can open it up into. Um, you can actually just upload these if you want. Just upload that CS file directly. Yeah, you can okay. upload the CS file directly. You can upload it as text. You can copy it to uh, Google Docs. I mean, there's lots of ways to upload it, but this is the only file I need. Later, I'll tell you when I need other files. And I really don't want all the other files. And again, I'm saying a lot of people turn in this, the project file, and the project file is utterly useless to me. It has no code in it. The project file is a list of files in the project. That's all it is. <laughs> it doesn't have any. Now, for taking it home, I would just go in here and take the whole folder, right? If you're gonna, if you have this version of Visual Studio anyway, you take the whole folder. You can just put it in on your desktop or somewhere, and you can run it. Right? Just navigate to it and run. You update the upload that whole folder to like Google Drive, and everything would be in there. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. I do that a lot. If it's big, sometimes I zip it before I upload it, but yeah. If you don't, you can uh, just take the CS thing, and you can start a new project and then just paste this in. You know, paste it in over the project file, program file that's there, and that also works generally. File management will probably be an issue for you for a while on these some of these. Also, uh, Visual Studio generally doesn't like your thumb drive. Thumb drives are good for moving it from place to place, but it doesn't like to execute off of your thumb drive. Um, sometimes it will, but it generally doesn't. Yeah. These will work when you get into something more complicated, it may not, uh, because it doesn't consider it a trusted drive. There are things you can do. You can go into Windows and make your thumb drive a trusted drive. But generally, there are times it won't execute because it doesn't trust. It needs trust in it. It doesn't trust the drive. OK. All of that was sort of to the side. Questions on this one? Now, there's three parts to that assignment, right? And the other part is, what I would do is rather than trying to put all three parts into one program, 
which is doable but a little bit weird and awkward I would you know make sure this is saved and I would do a brand new um, project so you might have to upload three files or you can again paste all three files into one word doc or one notepad or into the text file you can just uh, copy and paste the text directly into the text thing but all three of them I would do it as a separate project because it gets complicated otherwise and you can only have one main right in a program you can only have one main no program you can have two mains so I'm going to do a new project I will talk about all this so I'm not going to do it again I'm going to do it as assignment one underscore two can't have space names in your name. Actually, if you do put spaces in there, they'll just put an underscore. There. So. <laughs> I'm going to do OK. And it'll give me a blank one. I may let you do the third piece yourself, but we'll do this one together. And you know we have exactly the same thing that we had before. Every time we start a new one, we'll start with this sort of basic template. What would I do? So I think that this is exactly the same as the other one, except we output it differently, right? We uh, do it like it was an address for a label. Again, it's mostly just to get your sense. The third one is more fun. It's a Mad Lib. And as I said, I might let you guys play with that one on your own. What would we do first? Yeah, actually, that's a good thing. I was forgetting that, but yes. So let's do the quick documentation. Um, this program, I'm just going to say it produces a uh, mailing label. And you could have, uh, years ago when I did Visual Basic, when I was first doing computers, that was one of the things I did was write a mailing label program that would print to mailing labels. <laughs> Not very exciting, but. OK. I'm going to show you a different way to do variables. So I'm going to do, we'll do the right line. And uh, this time we might enter the whole name, right? Enter, and that needs quotes. I'll say enter your full name. Again, one of the nice things is string literals, which means that they're quoted. They're just literal. You're not doing anything with them. Are always in uh, red in Visual Studio. You can change the entire color scheme of Visual Studio if you want. I've seen people do some pretty psychedelic things. I actually wouldn't suggest it unless you have a plan in mind. <laughs> so I just said uh, console right line. Enter your full name. And then I'm going to do string full name equals uh, console read key. Some of this might drive you nuts. I show you different ways to do things. Last time, why is it not? Oh, not read key, read line. Sorry. So does there have to be a space? No, there does not. Okay. It, it'll ignore those spaces. It actually will probably space it for you, but it, but it's just for readability. So, what's the difference here between how I'm doing the variable? Yeah. Do you want to declare them? So you can. Last time we declared them at the beginning. You can also declare them when you use them, right at the moment that you you use them. There are advantages and disadvantages to both methods. I tend to do this because uh, I only have to write, I don't have to write it twice, right? <laughs> and then the other thing is that I, I know exactly where the variable was first used and declared. 
on the other hand, a lot of people like to see their variables neatly declared at the top of the, the program. As I said, there are advantages and disadvantages to both. I don't have a particular choice, but whichever works better for you. This can be a little messier as you go on because you have to kind of look for where the variables happen. Does that make sense? But it has exactly the same effect. You can assign a value to a variable in the same statement where you're declaring. Does that make sense? I see puzzle books. <laughs> this has the same effect as saying string full name semicolon full name equals. It's exactly the same result. It's just that we're declaring it down here. At the very moment, we're assigning a value to it. It's just a different way to do it. They have the same end result. Give you a second. If you have questions, give you a second to formulate them. Does that make sense, sort of? And actually, in terms of how you write your code, I don't care which way you do it. Declare it at the spot or declare it at the top. The advantage of declaring them at the top, one advantage, is that you have to think about them beforehand. You have to know what you're going to be using, although you can always go back to the top and add stuff. So, so I'm going to do console right line. Again, actually, we could probably copy and paste that if we want. So I wanted to add. What were we going to have? Is it a full address? So enter your street address. I'm going to ignore apartments. <laughs> I'm just going to call this address. Notice how I'm spacing things. Um, that's just for readability. You can space the things however you like. But you probably want to, um, you know, make it as readable as possible. So I'm going to do enter your city, and this will just be city. I'll pause once I get these here. State. Do we want two letter states or does it matter? I don't think that this matters. Now, state might be an issue for a variable name. No, that's weird. I don't want to rename full name to state. I was thinking state might be a keyword, but it isn't turning blue. So another thing you can't do with variables is name them um, same thing as it. Like you can't declare a variable a variable name as string. Right? You can't say string string. <laughs> string can't. You can't name something of uh, one of the blue words. And then, so I'm just going to do zip code. And I'll call this zip code. Give you a second on that. Does that make sense? We're just entering more stuff. We'll do the next assignment starts to do more interesting things like some math, you know, calculations, things that could actually add up to something more interesting. Okay, so how would we output this? There's a there's a couple of different ways you can do this for mm -hmm. output because we want to make it look like an address, right? So what are anybody know some of the ways we could do that? <clears throat> oh, 
I'll show you two different ways to have the same effect. Right line has a line break, so we could just do a right line for every line, right? Um, so I'll do that one. I'll do console right line, and I'll just do um, full name. Okay. Oh, it's because I didn't capitalize in. And uh, address. And we could sort of, if you want, you could cut and paste the copy and paste these. So next would be city. Actually, we probably want to change this one. Um, this one we might want to do placeholders. Because you usually do city, state, and zip on the same line, right? Yes. You always start counting at zero. When we talk about arrays and other things, you'll see that computers always start counting at zero. And so what I want is um, city, lowercase c, state, and zip. And that should do our zip code. That should do. Um, Uh, the, our little address. And I'll show you a different way to do it in a minute. I'm going to do the uh, console right line. Press any key to enter. Or to exit, rather. And then console uh, rekey. I want to show you another thing about this. I think it's fairly obvious that we'll be writing this over and over again, right? Because otherwise your program passes by. There is a toolbox thing over here. Um, so there's nothing in this toolbox right now, and it's processing that to tell me that. OK. So I want to, I'm going to pin it for a moment. I can take this code, and I can drag it onto the toolbox. And that way, wherever I want it, I can drag it off. So real quickly, you guys don't have to do this, but I just want to show you. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to see the text there, and I'm going to drag it on there, and there it is again. And it will cross programs. So when I do any other console programs, it will be there, and I can just drag it on. So this is uh, the toolbox. And it was on mine just over here. Just, and if you click on toolbox, it will pop open, and um, there's a little uh, thumbtack thing on these. If you click that, it'll pin it, which in a way is nice because then it'll give you your code side by side. And then you can drag that onto there. This is an extra. It's not part of the assignment. <laughs> Copy and paste that You can copy and paste it in there too. Yeah. You can put any kind of code snippet you want in here, right? Or create your own toolbox. Um, I'm going to run and we'll see if it did what it's supposed to do, and then I'll show you another name. So I'm just gonna do Steve 
Conger address. I'm going to say the school. What is it? 1701 Broadway. I'm not capitalizing, you notice, but you should probably say Seattle. Uh, and we didn't do a space, but it puts it out kind of the way we want it. We could do spaces in there, but you could do, like if I wanted some spacing in there, I could do a uh, console right line with nothing in it, and that would create a space. And I could do the same down here, it needs a semicolon. I'll run it and then I'll hold it a second. I just to show you the effect. So the spaces and put spaces in there. Questions on that? I want to show you one other way to do the, the spacing. And then I will post all, this is all being recorded, and then I'll post the code for the first two parts of this. I said I might let you do the third part, which is kind of fun on your own. Questions on any of this so far? Are you getting the feel of it at least? I mean, the, the most of part of this is just to get a feel for Visual Studio, a feel for how the code really works. And then we'll start actually doing stuff with the code more. I'm going to take silence as an acceptance here. <laughs> OK, I'll give you a Sorry. second. No, that's fine. I'll give you I have it here. Yeah, and it's quite possible that you'll have errors. I'm a little bit, I mean, if you forget a semicolon or you forget a, a quote or you have an extra space in something. I forgot to um, do a right line for state. Oh, so yeah. So when I started typing in state, it was like underlined red. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then I realized, oh, I need to make a right line. <laughs> that was my mistake. So. As I said, you'll you'll find when you do these that you'll always have little errors, particularly as you start off. Is there always will be errors because we'll always be doing more complicated things, so there will always be new stuff for you to mess up on. But uh, it's not a big deal to have a couple of errors. The trick is to go through and figure them out and fix them. I will come troubleshoot in a minute too. So I'm going to do one, another version of exactly the same. Actually, I'll make a line here between it. Um, here's a question: Do I want to do it with concatenation or with the placeholders? You guys want me to do it with the placeholders or just let's kind of concatenate it, I think. So I'm going to do full name. And I'm going to do a plus quote backslash in end quote plus. Anybody know what that backslash in does? It's an escape character. What does it cause to happen? It's a line break. Yeah. So this is another way to break lines. If we do right line, it breaks a line each time, like we did this. This can internally breaks a line. And you'll see this in other languages. This is a fairly common escape character uh, for a new line. That's what it means, new line. 
there's no difference between uh, service backslash R, backslash N, and just backslash N. Um, let me try. It should work with a backslash n. Let me see if mine works. If it doesn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, it might be. So let's do full name, um, address. And did you do it like this with a plus and in quotes? I think that might have been the issue. Because basically, you have to concatenate it in. It's processed inside of a string. It's an escape character inside of a string. So one of the ways we could do that is with placeholders, too. Uh, plus city. Uh, and I'm going to do the whole concatenation, since that's the way I'm going with it, and not do placeholders. Plus uh, state uh, plus put in a space and plus uh, zip code. Oh, because I need a plus there between that. So it should create a new line here between name and address and city. Again, I don't care which, when you do these as an assignment, I don't care which way you do it. I just want to show you the new line character, and you could do it all in one line like that if you really wanted to. Can I run it, or do you guys need it for a minute? I'll come back. I just want to make sure it works before you spend your time copying it. So let's do, I should come up with a different name for this. Uh, street address 102 somewhere. City. See, they both work on mine. You could do that with the. Uh, yeah, I could do. You, you should be able to, as long as it's in quotes, the place, you should work with the placeholders too. So I'm not sure. I mean, they'd be in between the placeholders, and you wouldn't need the pluses if you did that. I don't know if you want me to do that version too. Okay. One of the problems, the good things about code and problems, and I'll try not to overwhelm you with it, is that there's almost always several ways to do something. <laughs> so this is the second part of the assignment. Questions on that? Which shrimp? So do you have a plus in there? Are you missing a plus? Yeah, I have a, I have a plus. Let me look. Thank you. 
Okay, so the last assignment, which I'm going to let you guys do, uh, so let me go back to here, to here, and what it is is the, the very last part here is just to make a Mad Lib silly sentence with blanks, and you can do whatever you want. You can see with those blanks, you would just use the input, right? You just do the console right line to give out a prompt, say that you want a noun or you want a verb. You guys ever played Mad Libs? It's usually something you do when you're a little kid in the back of a car. But anyway, um, the blanks here could be when you do the output, they could be placeholders, right? And you just substitute the words in for the placeholders, or you can concatenate it in. And you don't have to uh, use my sentence. <laughs> you can do whatever you want as a Mad Lib. So it's just basically doing something kind of like what we did, but hopefully having a little bit more fun with it. So you could ask the user for a noun. You know, there was a, you want a noun there, who loved to eat. Those would both be, you could have an adjective and a noun. You know, basically whatever you want to ask for. And, and typically what you want is to get the more absurd sentence. Um, that part I'll let you guys do on your own. It's just a little bit, it's pretty much the same principle. It's just applying it a little differently. And again, to turn this in, do you guys need help turning it in or have you figured it out? I have a question about sure. that. Sure. So to turn in each piece, we do the resubmit assignment. Well, you shouldn't have to resubmit. Probably you want to wait till they're all done to submit, because okay. oh. when you because you can admit submit multiple files, okay. or so you could go to. Um, I have Google up here, and I'm logged in. So let's see if I went to Google Docs, um, or you could do a Word doc, you know, if you want. So I'm going to do Drive. And um, oh, it's a pain. So I'm just going to do a uh, Google Docs, an untitled document. So if you go to uh, the folder where your program is, or you could do it directly from Visual Studio if you want. You could just copy. So I'll just do Control A, Control C, go to that Google Doc. And again, it could be a Word doc. It could be whatever. I could paste it in. And you can paste all three of them in and just link that to my. So if you go to Canvas, do I have Canvas open anywhere? I don't think I, I should have. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. So um, when you see, I don't have a submit. I'd have to go into student view. But one of the things you can do is you can just, it actually has Google Doc as a submission. 
or you can just upload your uh, files. Or, as I said, if you finish all three before you upload, you can upload all three C sharp files, program C sharp files. You might want to rename it though. I'm not sure what it does if you do program CS, program CS, program CS. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I just went to. Um, so I just went to Google Docs in a blank document and I just pasted the code in. But you can do the same with Notepad or Word or in the text area. You can just take the three of them and paste them into the text area. So I can, you can put them on a single doc. Yeah, you can put them all on a single doc. So generally, um, I don't need to run these to tell if they work uh, at this level. But if I do want to run them, I can just copy from the, the document and paste it into a new project and run it. Right? It's really easy to copy and paste into a new So I just opened up my last assignment in a notepad form. Yeah. The code that I wrote did not show up, but this one is totally different. Well, what did you open? Um, I opened it in a notepad form. Sorry, I think you opened the wrong Oh, did I? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go into the dashboard. Go into the if you have trouble submitting, let me know. I mean, it's just I can handle almost anything you upload. Uh, it's except it, make sure it is the actual code files. I mean, it doesn't have to be the. The code, whether it's as a text form or a PDF, or a link to a Google Doc, or with, even if you upload the, the only thing, as I said, I'm worried about if you upload the three program files that it won't, it'll get confused. So you might want to rename oh. the files before you upload them. It renamed them for me. Did it? Program.cs. Program one, one. That's fine. CS. That's fine then. Okay. As long as it'll rename them so that it doesn't overwrite them, that was what I was afraid of. Yeah. So I will. We've been um, taping this. I'm going to stop the broadcast.